on. So this Lakers roster is deep and it is big. Our smallest player is Gabe Vincent at 6'3". Everyone else is 6'5 and above. And you have countless players that are 6'6", 6'7", 6'8". Even Jared Vanderbilt supposedly is like 6'9", 6'10 now, which that would be massive. And with that size, it is going to be very overwhelming for a lot of teams in the league. And yes, the Lakers absolutely still need another center, right? They got Anthony Davis, they got Jackson Hayes, and the Lakers are planning on, at least it looks like for the beginning of the season, uh, getting some looks at Jackson Hayes at the starting position for center, and then Anthony Davis at the four, you kind of mix and match. But regardless, even if they do start Anthony Davis at the five, you still need another center, whether that's you know, Bismack Biombo or Christian Wood, or maybe they go the vet route and bring in like a DeMarcus Cousins, Hassan Whiteside, which I'm in the camp of, or, you know, even Dwight Howard. A lot of people want Dwight Howard. But beyond the center, right, because that very likely will be the, the 14th spot, you have a 15th spot that you could bring somebody in. And also you get the the three two-way players and stuff like that and kind of round out the roster. And when you look at this roster, it's like, well, what do you need? Now, obviously, the Lakers made it abundantly clear that they wanted to go bigger. They wanted to add some size. And there's not much talent out on the market, especially for a vet minimum price. But there is still a name out there that is a little surprising, not like super surprising, but a little surprising that he hasn't been picked up yet. And that is Kelly Oubre. And now... The problem with going and getting Kelly Oubre, it's like, where do you fit him in, right? Now, he could play the two guard if you need to, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, size, uh, a 3 and D style type player, although he's not really great at the three, but this is a guy that is still very talented, very athletic, he's got good size, good length, uh, can impact the game of basketball on both sides of the ball, this is a guy that can score, he just came off of a 20 point uh, uh, season, And yes, he wasn't super hyper efficient and he was, you know, averaging 20 points on a bad team. So a lot of questions about that. But this is a guy that is a double digit scorer. I mean, the last like six years or whatever, he's averaged at least 16 plus. And so you're looking at a guy that can have a real impact on a roster, especially at a vet minimum. Now, I don't know if they'll be able to get Kelly Oubre at a vet minimum. I don't know if he'll take that. You know, Chicago's got some money to play with, so maybe Chicago brings him in, and you know, he takes say five million or something like that. They go up to like ten point, what is it, ten point four million something in that ballpark. But if Chicago, like Chicago, based on reports, is trying to go after Christian Wood, so let's say they go and they do use that money to get Christian Wood, do the Lakers go and sign like Bismack Biombo and then? Maybe bring in uh, Kelly Oubre. I I think that that would be a pretty solid move. Now, when you look at the Lakers roster, again, they got plenty of size. But the two positions that kind of stand out are the center position, obviously, and then the two guard, right? Now, the Lakers aren't like desperate for a two guard by any means. You got Austin Reeves, you got Max Christie who can step into that role. You can move Torrey and Prince over. D'Lo is more than capable of shifting over and playing the two guard at 6'5 and uh, his ability to shoot. And he was really good off the ball for the Lakers. But you could bring in Kelly Oubre with the promise of him kind of being the backup two guard. Like, hey, you fit in. We have you. We can bring you in. Come in on a vet minimum. You're not going to start, but you can come off the bench. We'll find you minutes. It just gives them another athletic, physical type body and, and presence, right? Now, this is a guy that he's still only 27, so he still fits the the standard in which the Lakers are trying to acquire players in that like early to mid 20 range. Kelly Oubre fits that. You know, he's not some guy that's like 35 or anything like that. Um, it just, to me, it ultimately boils down to, like, would he be willing to take that vet minimum deal? But the well is drying up as far as cash goes. Not many teams have much money left, if any. Now, there are teams that could still use them, right? Like, the like I, I don't know if the Phoenix Suns locked up their roster yet, but, you know, if Phoenix still has an open roster spot, he makes sense for them. Uh, Dallas, another team that makes sense. Um, I, I'm sure he will find a home. 
right? He's very talented. He's, he's a quality guy. But now there are the question marks of like, is he a team guy, right? Because that's that's kind of been a big thing. And e- even with the Golden State Warriors, there were questions at times like, is he a team guy? So he would have to be willing to come to the Lakers buy into the system, buy into, hey, some nights you might play 30 minutes. Some nights you might play 10 minutes. Some nights you might not play at all. If he's willing and okay with kind of being a part of this team with the same goal and the same mindset of trying to win an NBA championship, then I absolutely think you sign him. I absolutely think you bring him in. Right? Like, this is a guy that can play multiple positions. He can play the shooting guard. He can play small forward position, which is always good to have some flexibility. Like I said, good size, good length. Um, You know, he was a solid defensive player. So he's a guy that can hold his own on the defensive end. Uh, Not, he's not some like crazy, super elite guy, but he was very solid. I mean, this is a guy that has a career uh, 114 or 111 uh, defensive rating. Right, which league average is like 115. So this is a guy that can come in and I think make a real impact on this Lakers roster. the The biggest concern is just his lack of shooting. Right, like he is not the most efficient guy when it comes to just especially shooting the three ball, but just scoring. Period. Like he again, he scored 20 points a game on a, on a bad team. Right, but this is a guy that can score the basketball. He's he's creative. He can get to the rim. Problem is, he's not going to get. He averaged 17 field goal attempts for the Charlotte Hornets last year. He's not getting 17 field goal attempts, and he was 43 percent overall from the field. Now, a lot of that was his poor three point shooting. He shot over 51 percent from two point range, uh, and he was 32 percent from three this year. But he has had some decent years. He's he's a career average 33% three-point shooter. But he had that year, uh, Phoenix, where he shot uh, 35%, which is right around league average. And then the previous year with Charlotte, he shot just shy of 35%. So And that was on seven attempts per game. So if he can kind of get back to that, if he can kind of get back to, to you know 35%, then you're talking about an athletic, young, 3 and D style defensive wing that can come in and score the basketball, right? It's a guy that, again, shoots 51%. He could be a cutter. You think of all the the just playmakers we have. Austin Reeves, DeAndre Russell, uh, LeBron James. You got guys that can find the open man and it run some actions for him and allow him to kind of use his size, use his athleticism, use his speed to, to find open looks. Um, if he can do that and come in and buy in, then I'm all for it. He also was a solid free throw shooter, which is good. That shows promise that like he can knock it down. He shot 76%, which isn't great. I'm not saying he's great by any means, but he was solid, right? Solid free throw shooter, which gives me some promise that, you know, maybe the three ball can come around a little bit. But you're looking at, again, you're looking at a double-digit guy that can give you 15-plus on any given night. He's a good, solid rebounder. Averages 4.5 for his career. Last year, he averaged 5. He had a stretch where he was getting 6 a game. It's going to come down, again, to him buying it. If he says, you know what, I'll go to the Lakers, I'll take the vet minimum, right? He can even do it as like a prove-it deal. I mean, look at the success guys like, you know, Malik Monk got. Right. Where it's like, hey, come here, you know, like, yes, you you believe your value is more. Your value might be worth more. But if you go and you go to the Lakers and you have a good year, you're going to get paid. I mean, even Dennis Schroeder, right? Dennis Schroeder fumbled the bag with the Lakers, follows that up by getting five million a year and then follows that up with a vet minimum contract. And he played well for the Lakers and was a big part of the Lakers success that season and he just got paid by the by the Toronto Raptors, right? Got 13 million a year on two years. So there there is the the success in the formula of like you go to the Lakers, you got the big bright lights, you got, you know, just the media and everybody just kind of focused on you. Come in, play whatever role is asked of you, right? Don't be a headache, 
be a team guy, come in, contribute when you're on the court, play well, and you, you'll get paid. You'll, you'll get a contract. You'll get more than you probably would otherwise. And so he's a guy that I think if he's willing to accept all of that, and he's willing to kind of, you know, sort of bet on himself for a year. You know, he's not going to sign a long-term deal. But again, if you can, it doesn't hurt. You can't have too much size. You can't have too many wings. You can't have too many just athletic, young type guys. This is a guy that can absolutely help, right? It, it's a guy that gives some insurance with the rest of the roster. Again, Darvin Ham's got to try to find spots for everybody. That's going to be the tough part. But if everyone buys in and believes into the team aspect of it all, then I think you can make it work, right? Like, if everybody kind of says, hey, we're, we're working towards a common goal here. The goal is to win an NBA championship. He just gives insurance, right? He gives insurance on, you know, a guy getting hurt or a guy just, you know, missing some significant time or, you know... um, could be a guy you, you add in a deal for salary, end up waving if you need to. If, say, somebody on the buyout market comes up, that makes more sense. As the 15th guy, I don't think you could really do much worse than that. Right? I mean, this is a guy that, I mean, would be a starter on most teams. Right? Like, this is a guy that could have a real impact on any type of roster. Right? This is a guy, I mean, he started for Golden State in 2020-2021. Started 50 of 55 games for him. Right? This is a guy that's been a starter for a good majority of the last like handful of years. So on, you know, on several teams. You're talking Phoenix, you're talking Golden State, and Charlotte again. Charlotte's a bad team, but you know, this is a guy that could could very well be a starter on most teams in the league. If you can have him as your 15th man, you can't have too much talent, right? You can't have too much size. You can't have too much athleticism. You can't have too much. He fits everything that the Lakers are working for. So I say, if you can, and he's willing to take a vet minimum deal, I think you, I think you sign him up. I do. I think you bring him in. You, 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 I would bring him in on a non-guarantee, if I'm being honest, just because Again, I would be concerned, is he a guy that's going to buy it, right? Now, you say, you might say, like, yeah, dude, I'm coming in. I want to prove myself. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. Whatever you need from me, coach, I'm here. It's another thing when you start getting those DMPs or, you know, you go from, you know, 25 minutes a game or 32 minutes a game as he played last year. You know, you go from 30-plus minutes a game to, like, 15 minutes a game. It's a big difference, right? That's a big drop-off. You're playing half the time. Is he okay with that? Does he start throwing a little fit and kind of just get bothered? So if it was me, I would kind of look for uh, just bring him in on a non-guaranteed deal. So that way, if you need to, you can waive him. Plus, he's kind of like uh, an abundance of sorts, right? You already have a drawer full of Kelly Oubre type players and some even better and it's just like all right just throw it throw it in that drawer but again it's, it's not bad to have anyway as always this is a discussion so I pass a question on you let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below what do you think do you think yeah bring in Kelly Oubre do you think no uh you know save that 15th roster spot bring somebody else in uh however you feel whatever your thoughts are love to hear it let